Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is me, Mr. Harris Cameraman, and today I'm going to be talking about Spider-Man Dead No More. So this fan film released, what time is it? Like two, three hours ago. Um, I just finished watching it because I got a bit delayed. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, it was a weird one for me. Uh, I saw the official trailer and reacted to it five, six months ago whenever it released. Final trailer a few weeks ago, or whenever at least like two months ago actually. And this fan film was a pleasant surprise, so I'm gonna quickly talk about it. But first, if you haven't already seen my trailer for my official trailer now for Spider Man: Anything Within Time, my own fan film, that is at the end of this video and on a separate channel in the description. Okay, now let's get into the video. I was pleasantly surprised by this. Going into the past few weeks, I kind of didn't know much about. Before 2023, I didn't know much about power and responsibility, responsibility back to basics, um, best of enemies, things like that. Log date one also, obviously. So coming into 2023, I found out about this whole universe that is run by um, Buckeye Studios, Party Boy Studios, I think, and the creators of Power and Responsibility. I don't remember. I don't think they have studio name officially, but I don't remember. But I saw Responsibility, I've seen the trailer for Back to Basics, and when I'm going into this series, um, I kind of assumed Dead No More was a standalone thing until I found out it was part of a series. So I rewatched it. I watched one, two, but she's Responsibility, then Best of Enemies, and it was very, it was an interesting journey because going into it, I just came off of watching Power and Responsibility. So that is really one of the best fan films. So coming into these three, it's very different. But if you don't know about the phases thing, before I talk about that no more, what it is is there's this whole new studio universe and things like Power Responsibility, Spider-Man Responsibility, Best of Enemies, and Log Date 1 are all part of Phase 1, and this kicked off Phase 2. So I really liked this fan film. Um... I'm just going to quickly talk about the first two because I never made a video. I don't plan on making a video about them. Mostly because they are... I usually don't do well in videos that are from the past. You just don't do as well as new videos. So, um, Responsibility was six years ago. So, the 20-minute episode was... Uh, um, it was an interesting experience. There were parts I liked... But you can see how much the actors have aged. So, it, there are issues I have with the first one. But I feel like that is just was... It, they grew a lot. And Best of Enemies was really good. I thought Best of Enemies was so much better than Responsibility. And I really saw how much these characters and actors and people like that just grew and realize their potential. I haven't seen Retribution, so I don't know what happens there. But now let's talk about Dead No More. Um, I was expecting it to really, from the transformation from Responsibility to Best of Enemies, it was such a huge transformation that I expected another huge transformation. And I kind of got that. Um, Harry was never my favorite character. I always felt like he was kind of like there. But I liked the plot of this a lot. So obviously we have to do the six points. First is directing. I feel like this was directed extremely well. There are very few times, most fan films I'm like, they had shots, there were some good shots, there were some bad shots, whatever. You could see that the director of this, who also plays Spider-Man, put their heart and soul in every shot. And you can even see that the way the camera's placed, it's not like, let's just get a shot of all of them. It's like, Let's frame it so we can see their emotions in the frame. And I never really, I don't really get that out of many fan films. Most fan films, I feel like, have decent cinematography, but I feel like this, it was really directed with such passion. As for editing, editing is really good in this. I feel like the shocker fight looked genuinely good, and so did the um, whenever Spider Man swung. I feel like if I had to point out a weak point, this would definitely be... Eh, no, it actually wouldn't. Editing in this was really good. And what I do like is that they didn't lean into it so much. 
I think when fan films lean into the fact that it's a CGI nightmare, that's when it kind of fails. And I really like how it leans a lot more into practical effects and fights and things like that, because that's what I like in a fan film. Not to say that CGI is bad, I'm saying it's risky. Moving on to acting, this is one of the parts where this film shines. Um, I'd say this is one of two parts. I wouldn't say it's where it shines best. I'd say this is one of the best, though. I think all... Actually, no, this is the best part of the film, easily, the acting. Um, I love the acting of this film. Peter is, in my opinion, this is the definitive... This is the definitive Peter of this universe. I think it's very difficult with the um, power and responsibility Peter. Really great. Um, there's the Dead No More Peter, which is great, which I really like. He sounds so much like Tom Holland. Like, just how, like, it it's just, just done so well. And then we even have, not part of this universe, but like the Prom Night universe. With such a great Peter, but I feel like this one, like, really fights all of them so well. Which I did not expect, actually. Moving on to Ben, Eric, Riley. Ooh, he was really, really good. You could see from his first appearance how annoying he was. And then he really grew from that first thing in responsibility to an actual character. And I'm not saying he was, he was, he was not great in responsibility. I personally did not connect with the character. Moving on to when we kind of see him be a clone. And he's like, I don't want to be a clone. I don't want to be a monster. That's where I felt like this character shined. I think he was better when he felt vulnerable. And I really liked when he... I lo- I really felt when he felt like he was like being teared from the inside out. And it's such an interesting character point. Because we get the Peter. We get all that so many times. We've seen that in other fan films. But I've never seen a plot where this person has to accept their fate. And when he dies at the end of the second act, that was really a big emotional moment. And I really like that. I think they nailed his death so well. And I think that was definitely one of the highlights, in my opinion. Not that I'm happy he died, but I think they did it very well. Moving on to a few other characters, I was fine with everyone else. Like, Warren, fine. Gwen did a decent job. But besides that, there was the two Spider-Man were the highlight performances. Now we are moving on to the story. This is maybe the best part of the film as well. So I'm going to do a quick rock walkthrough of the entire film. So the film opens up. We get the three spider, like the spider group team working together. Great job with that. I like all of those people. I think they're all great characters. So when we see that there's this imposter, Peter, I think this is that's one of the best plots a film can do. I think it's great when you have a villain who challenges them, but when it's themselves being framed for murder, it's a plot I personally just like, because I like mysteries and things like that, so I really like the plot of this film. One of my favorite moments, I think um, I'll get into action next in a few seconds when I get to choreography, but I'd say my favorite bit of scenes in the film, not talking action sequences, because those are all really good, I'd say those top these, But I'd say the best, not like an action sequence, but the best scene in the film of just either dialogue or something happening is two scenes combined. It's the death of Eric Riley and then the sulking montage. That, those were two amazing sequences. I think when Ben Riley died, it was done so well. And then when it transitions to the montage, you can like feel it. The music brings out the emotions and... The montage is done so well. And I think it just, it really works with everything going on. We get the split perspectives and everything in that sequence works so well. And I think that's the best non-fight scene moment in the film and maybe the best. Moving on to choreography, this is another pro where this film shines. You can tell they really worked hard to make the action look like the punches hit, which is something most fan films do not achieve. So to get that far is really amazing. I don't have much else to say. 
if I had to put a weak point, I'd put it on the music, the final category, mostly because I feel like it was used well. I'm not saying it wasn't used well. I'm just saying it could have been used better, in my opinion. I think there's a lot of scenes where there's silence, which I think is great, but I think they also don't always use it to their advantage. But I'd say the best point where they use music is when they use the licensed song on that montage, because I feel like if you can make the audience feel something for these fictional characters, that's when you're succeeding as a filmmaker. And as a filmmaker myself, that's what you want to see in a fan film. You want to see when you feel something for those characters, that's when you're doing something right. But besides that, I don't have much else to say. I loved this fan film a lot. I really thought it was amazing. I could probably talk about it a lot more. And if I have had some success with my Dead No More videos in the past. My last one got like 350 views or something, which is good for my channel. So if the review does well, I might do a, what I like, when I'm starting a series where I dive into fan films a lot more. Instead of doing these kind of surface reviews, I go a lot more into these like longer, maybe like 20, 30 minute reviews where I talk about everything in this depth and especially the plot and things like that. So if this does, this review does well, and you guys want to see something like that, where I really dive deep into this fan film, then I will do that. But until then, I don't have much else to say on my initial thoughts. So besides that, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see the trailer, the official trailer for my own fan film, Spider-Man and Group in Time, that's in the end of the video and the description. Besides that, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see a deep, deep dive, I guess, into this um, fan film, just... They, if it does well, then I probably will. So besides that, thank you so much for watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.